Kitchen, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Today, we're going to be diving deep as always. This past weekend, I did a crawfish boil right outside. I had my shrimp, the potatoes, the corn, the sausage, and of course, those good old crawfish, the crawdads, the crayfish, the mud bugs. However way you call it, folks, I had them, and they were so mm -mm delicious, folks, I'm telling you. But of course, after your crawfish boil, you just got so much crawfish left over. You don't know what to do with you. You got crawfish swimming out your ears, down by your toes, and everywhere else. So folks, today I'm going to show you how to get rid of those crawfish with a quick and easy recipe. Today I'm going to be doing a crawfish corn chowder. That's right, folks, a crawfish corn chowder. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. So to start off making our crawfish corn chowder, first we're going to take eight tablespoons of butter, which is going to be equivalent to one stick of butter. We're going to heat our saucepan, or I'm going to take my Dutch oven, and we're going to go ahead and slowly melt our butter down on a low heat. And right before our butter is fully melted, we're going to go ahead and add in two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. And we're just going to let that butter melt and that flour mix together. After you add your flour and butter, you're just going to make sure you mix that all together before you add in your vegetables. Now that our butter and flour mixture has melted and is now blended, is now the perfect time to go ahead and add our vegetables. So the vegetables that I'm going to add today is going to be your celery, your onions, and also some garlic. Now we're going to let our veggies cook in that butter flour mixture for about 15 minutes just until tender. Now that our vegetables have been cooking for 15 minutes, it's time to go ahead and add our other ingredients. So we're going to go ahead and add in a can of regular corn. We're going to go ahead and add in two cans of cream style corn. Next, we're going to go ahead and add in one can of cream of potato. Following that, we're going to add in two cups of whole milk. And also two cups of heavy whipping cream. Now it's time to blend our soup together. Make sure you mix all your ingredients together. You want to get it nice and smooth. After you mix all your ingredients together, now is the perfect time to go ahead and add in some parboiled potatoes. So I went ahead and diced up some small potatoes and boiled them maybe for like five minutes and then go ahead and just add them right in there. And that's about four medium sized potatoes. Go ahead and mix that in. Now it's time to add in our seasonings. We're going to add in a little salt, a little pepper, and also a little bit of your Cajuning seasoning. I'm going to use the Louisiana Cajuning seasoning. Go ahead and mix that together. And now we're going to let this pot simmer for about 30 minutes. Make sure you constantly stir because you don't want the bottom of your pot to scorch. There's, now that our chowder has been simmering for 30 minutes, now it's time to go ahead and add our crawfish tails. Go ahead and stir that in. Drop your chowder down to a nice low temperature. And last but not least, it's time to go ahead and add in some of our parsley into our chowder.
Now let that simmer for an additional five minutes and then it's time to dive into our crawfish corn chowder. So sizzlers, now that our crawfish corn chowder is done, it's time to go ahead and scoop it in this bowl. Top it off with a little parsley for garnish and dive into it, baby. So let's go ahead and get into that. I'm telling you, I can just smell this, this good old crawfish and this corn chowder. It just smells delicious. I'm telling you, this right here, folks, will be a nice little hearty meal for you. Especially after doing that boil, if you got any leftovers and you're just trying to get rid of it, you can definitely do this crawfish corn chowder and it is going to be delicious. So let's go ahead and put that down. Get the greens going on. Mmm. Mmm. You guys got to look at this. Right, get down on making that good old crawfish corn chowder. Folks, let me tell you, if you are not a fan of crawfish, shame on you. But you can do this chowder with crab, you can do it with shrimp, you can throw some lobster in there, or you can just eat it without any kind of shellfish inside. But folks, before we go, you already know what we do before we go. It's time to dive on in to this good old crawfish corn chowder. So let's go ahead and have a bite. Folks, it is time to dive on into this good old crawfish, yes. I know it's going to be so good. Let's dive into it. Here we go. Mmm. Folks, let me tell you. That crawfish. It still got that good old season from that boil in there. It got a good old kick to it. The potatoes was cooked perfectly. Make sure you parboil them before you dump them in. Five minutes, chop them up, dice them up. Throw them in there, let them boil for five minutes. There you go. It's done. Mmm. Mmm. Yes. Well, let me tell you. Y'all can sit here all day and watch me eat on this corn chowder. Or you can go out tomorrow, today, or whenever. And get the ingredients and make it at home and make sure you let me know when you make it because I want to sit there and eat my bowl with you while we both have dinner together but hmm folks they're gonna try the good but before you go make sure you like comment and subscribe down below and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Sartain with Sparks. Bye-bye. <laughs>